structurally he changed public opinion. It means that the new generations that follow him are not going to be Peronist. They, they are going to be pro-market, libertarians, classical liberals, and, and, and that changed forever, in my opinion. And that had never happened before in the history of Argentina, or probably in the history of Latin America. So he achieved something extraordinary. Some of us helped, but he's the main, the main figure there. Now, compared to Bolsonaro, Trump, he's, he's different. He's basically someone who truly believes in, in the institutions. He would never uh, mess with the institutions. He is a Democrat. Um, he, he believes in, liber in, in, in liberal democracy or classical liberal democracy. And he uh, is someone who has shown also a pragmatism now that he didn't win in the first round. He has come together with the former rivals from Juntos por el Cambio, which was the Patricia Bullrich, the other center-right uh, wing candidate that was running. And he has uh, said that I'm, I'm starting from a clean slate, so let's, let's come all together. And this is something that most people I, I used to talk with uh, were saying, no, he's never going to do that because he's insane. He's not insane. I know him. He's extremely smart and pragmatic. And, and, and also, if he, has, if he has to be. But he's also principle-driven. Uh, He's not going to just be a president that doesn't do anything and like Macri and just try to you know get through the four years. He actually can't afford to do that because they are on the verge of hyperinflation now in Argentina. So uh, I think people are misjudging him and, and there is a, a reaction from the media against him because he is going to be, if he wins, the first libertarian candidate ever to win a presidential election in modern times in the Western world. And, and, and so journalists don't, don't really like pro-capitalists, um, hardcore pro-capitalists. Compared to him, Ronald Reagan is like Karl Marx. Yeah? So, <laughs> so it's really impressive that he has this chance of winning. And, mm -hmm. and I would say that he um, will, will have a, a, good, a good right as a person if he wins. Do you, do you think there's a, a risk potentially that of, of basically trying to go too far too quickly and it, it being quite chaotic i mean in terms of cutting uh, even philosophically you know cutting back a, a substantial amount of government spending is something um, a lot of classical liberals have, have talked about and, and advocated for um is it something that he'll i suppose be able to achieve politically um and and is there like a i suppose a, a lot of thought about and this is where i think there's a lot of struggle is how to get to from a to b like how to what kind of reforms you'll need to do to get to the end point rather um, of, I suppose, a smaller government and um, more entrepreneurship and social mm -hmm. mobility. Yeah, and well, one of the things that he won't be, I mean, he can do an, um, some executive orders or functions, but he won't, he doesn't have a majority in Congress too much to do a lot of big things. He can do some things himself. I think, as Axel mentioned, he, he'll moderate himself now with trying to build a bigger coalition. But at the end of the day, uh, Argentina needs needs that change, regardless if it's if it was him, if it's someone else. And I think he's the one that has the better chance of doing it. If what Patricia Bullrich would have won, I, I mean, I'm not an expert uh, on on her program or others, but it didn't it was it didn't give me a sense that she would be making those changes and that her party. Uh, that was in power before the current Peronist government was able to do anything. So it's it's kind of compli it's very complicated. There was a Nobel laureate in economics, uh, Simon Kuznets, that said that there's four types of countries in the world: developed, underdeveloped, Argentina, and Japan. Because Argentina <laughs> is always such a weird yeah. case that it has, as you said, they they have a lot of natural resources, human capital, a lot, and there's all they're always struggling. And what what uh, I think brought me to thinking about that quote again this week was even though he did well in Patricia Bullrich with both of their uh, votes, they, they could win, the center-right could win, but there were still 35% who voted for Massa, who is the current minister of economics, who is cre a big part to blame for the 13% monthly inflation. So I, it's it's a complicated case but uh, for Argentina, but he would be the one that I think would be Maybe he doesn't go all the way in doing all the reforms that he said. He is uh, trying to sort of cater to the base in this first round, and he may be moderate himself. But Argentina needs those changes. It's been too many years 
too many uh, missed opportunities and they need to do it. And I think that he's just has more of that maybe grit, more of the perseverance to see a lot of this stuff happen. I think he will be slower than what he's saying and he doesn't have the majority in Congress. So he, on, on one of the, his key points, I believe, is dollarization, which seems mm. like uh, for all the critiques of, of the Federal Reserve, it's not allowing inflation to get quite out, as control, out of control compared to Argentina. Is that something that is, uh, I suppose, a, a viable policy um, in, in practice in Argentina? Is that likely to happen? So Argentina has over $200 billion in cash under the mattress. Argentina, the Argentinian economy is already dollarized. I mean, everyone who, who can uh, afford to buy dollars has dollars. You buy properties, you buy it in dollars in cash. You, you bring the whole it's package like of Venezuela the, as well, isn't it? Like a, yeah, a, but an, it's, an it's, it's happening the same, the same, yeah. pro, the same mm-hmm. thing because hyperinflation completely destroyed the Bolivar in Venezuela, and in Argentina, it's, it's on the verge verge of hyperinflation. And every time, everyone thinks in terms of dollars. When you go and you buy something at the store, even the guy who has an average salary is thinking, how ma- how many dollars are this? I mean, how much money is this in dollars? Because because inflation is 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 so dramatic that you don't have prices, more or less, stable prices anymore. Mm. And so this is the first, the first thing. So you, you could just do it like, like El Salvador did it with, um, with uh, saying the dollar is from now on legal tender. And that would change a lot because dollar will start circulating and you will have a, an organic process of, of, of replacement uh, of the currency. But then you have the problem of the debt of the central bank and the public debt. And uh, the big uh, question is how you get the, the, the dollars you need in order to, uh, to pay off these debts mm. and, and to dollarize uh, bank deposits and, and, and that. And that's the, that's the main, main challenge. But there are some, some ideas that, that they already have. And there are, I, th- I know, um, having conversations with other important institutions uh, in the US and other, and other parts of the world, to, to get this um, done. And uh, if they have the political support of their partners from Juntos por el Cambio, that would uh, make a big difference. And also if there is political support from Congress, which because I think they will need um, laws in order mm-hmm. to make all of this happen. But, you know, they don't have a choice. Mm. It's not like, oh, no, we are going to stay with the peso. Dollarization, in my view, is going to come to Argentina in a disorderly, a disordered way, or uh, you know, uh, like in an institutionalized uh, way, uh, because people don't want the peso anymore. When I went mm. to Argentina, so that your viewers know <laughs> a sense of have a sense of the proportion of the problem. Uh, 2015, 16, it was like 15 peso per dollar. Now it's over a thousand pesos per dollar. This wow. is this is this is spiraling out of control, and and it's it's really going to be mm. much worse in, in a year from now. So I don't think they have a lot of time. Mm. I think they will have three four months in order to uh, announce uh, because you in Argentina you are voted into office in order to control inflation. That was Menem, for instance, and and and, and, and many cases before him. If they don't do it, if they don't start from day one. Mm-hmm trying to solve the problem with aggressive uh, reforms, then they will, be, uh, they will lose their honeymoon political